Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the bride and groom portrait time of a wedding day. And this is the same couple from last week where I showed you their ceremony, gave you guys some tips for photographing low light ceremonies without flash, as well as some tips for just getting the best possible images in low light scenarios. And then the week before that, I shared with you the getting ready part of this wedding day. So if you missed any of those videos, I will link them down below. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the portrait time directly after the ceremony. So there wasn't a first look. They saw each other for the first time inside of the ceremony, like I shared with you last week. So now we just wrapped up their ceremony and we walked right over to the water because we're right here in Annapolis. So here we are in downtown Annapolis. I decided to pose my couple right here in front of the water. We just wanted to take a couple of portraits quickly before we got the rest of the bridal party. Cuddle up in there, get nice and close. There you go. And I'll give her a kiss, but push you back a little bit, like you're dipping her just a little. Oh, we've been pushing. My back? Yeah. This side. Uh -huh. That's perfect, guys. So then I ended up pulling out my 70 to 200 millimeter and getting some more portraits of them without the water. I just wanted some garden, um, really gorgeous foliage behind them. And here are some of the images that we produced during this time of the day. I switched over and decided to jump all the way across and shoot towards the groom's back. And I think these were some really beautiful images as well. Just switching it up constantly because the lighting itself just kept switching. It was kind of a mixed cloudy day. So there were times that it was a lot brighter and then it would get a lot darker. So we decided to head over to where their reception was going to be held, but I wanted to get some pictures of them getting onto their trolley. And I think this is just a really great example of times throughout the wedding day where you might not be taking traditional portraits, but you can get some really gorgeous work. If you're looking for those opportunities where things are happening, they're moving from location to location. Now that we are in our final location, so this looks pretty similar to where we were before, but it's actually a totally different location. And this is where their reception is taking place. And we're gonna get a couple of portraits here before they go in for cocktail hour. And then we're probably going to get some more portraits after. But I just wanted to show you how I am still shooting on the 70 to 200 millimeter. And it's really great to be able to get that kind of compression and telephoto angle from where I'm standing up here at the top of the hill. I instructed them to go ahead and just walk out onto this dock, look at each other and walk together. And I let them know that even though there are some people in the background on the docks, I can't see them from my angle just because of the way that this green foliage is blocking them. So I took some portraits here of them from further away and then I decided to meet them down on the docks. So right now I'm alternating between two lenses. One of them is a 35 millimeter. It's much, much wider. I'm able to get the entire scene. But then of course with my 70 to 200, I like to get up just a little bit closer. So here I'm telling them to just snuggle up together. I instructed the groom to go ahead and kiss um, his bride right there on the temple so I can still see her face. And then I let them know that I'm gonna get some walking shots of them next. So first I instruct them to go ahead and start walking away from me. And then of course I'll have them turn around and start walking back towards me. The lighting throughout this wedding day was shifting a lot. We were dealing with sometimes really bright light, sometimes um, more cloud coverage. And then you'll also see that there was a huge rainstorm that came through and thankfully it did clear. So taking a break from portraits, I decided to shoot the actual tent itself shooting their sweetheart table, making sure I got some of the details that were inside of the tent, the decor, the place settings, that kind of thing. And at this point in the day, the couple need to, you know, get freshened up. They need to get something to eat. Um, just take a break from being outside. This was a July wedding and it was really warm. So it was really great for them to just take a second and step away. So they're going to get freshened up while I shoot the rest of the tent. So for all of these detail images of the reception and the room itself, I didn't have to use flash, but I did use flash later on in the reception. I often keep a flash on one of my cameras, even though it's not 
on because I never know when I'm going to walk inside and I'm going to need to pop a flash when I'm taking some pictures of people and guests or if the lighting situation will call for me to use a fill flash. So that's why you always see that oftentimes I am, it looks like I'm using a flash even when I'm not. So I photographed the cake both with and without flash and the image that I really preferred was with flash. So now we're here in cocktail hour and I have two goals here. Number one, I really need to talk to my bride and see if she's willing to go back outside for some pictures after this rainstorm. But also while I'm waiting to have a chance to talk to her, I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to snap some pictures of her with her guests and the people that she's hanging out with just so that we can get some photojournalistic shots. So I asked her if she wanted to go outside and thankfully she was absolutely down for that and wanted to get more portraits now that the rain had cleared. So I decided to come over here into this garden area so that we could just get a little bit more variety. We already had a lot down by the water itself and now I wanted to get some in the garden. Go ahead and just hold those hands in the front like together and just let them be like loose. It's like you've done this before. <laughs> That's our <laughs> looking at each other. Wow, is that <laughs> Macy, is there a way we can step back just a couple steps into the shade so that you guys won't feel oh. the sun blazing this in your eyes? Dress. I can only imagine what people look like. Yeah, take one more step back and then go into this like bush area a little bit. Can you go in there? A little bit. Just a little. And then just um, arms around his shoulders, like give her a big hug. Nice and close. Yes, yeah, so cute, guys. So you'll notice in these images now that I show you, compared to the first one where they were standing more in the direct sunlight, the difference in the highlights and shadows is crazy. So pay attention to the direction of light and just the way that it looks on your client's faces. We then continued, this is just a few steps behind where they were before, and I decided to get some portraits of my bride here alone and then also add in the groom after. When choosing a photo location for portraits, I'm really looking for even lighting. And that's what I found here when I was taking pictures of my bride and her bouquet. So next, I wanted to get a veil portrait of my couple here together, but since the groom was so much taller, I had to have him crouch down. And you can see this looks absolutely ridiculous from a behind the scenes perspective, but the final image is just so beautiful and it's actually one of my favorite from their wedding day. So as you can see, sometimes it looks a little ridiculous from behind the scenes, but the pictures themselves turn out amazing. If you like this video and these types of videos, be sure to hit subscribe because I publish videos just like this to help you grow your photography business each and every week here on YouTube. And I would love to see you back here next week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.